are on part four of Paint Your Narrowboat. Um, this boat now, you've seen the, the process in part three, it's in its full primer stage. So it's had four coats of primer and we're now moving on to the next stage which will be undercoating and also looking at what products we're going to start thinking about putting on the roofs and decks and a little bit of thought now as to where colours are going to be and what we need to be thinking about. But before we go on to that, um, you've seen us using rollers. Sometimes that, that comes a bit of a surprise to people that we're using rollers. Um, I did mention briefly, the idea of using rollers is we get a nice even coverage, it's easy to apply and we can easily meet the manufacturer's specs as far as application is concerned. The rollers we prefer to use uh, a fairly high density foam. Um, you can use all sorts of rollers for this product, for this, this type of uh, application. Some people like to use a larger roller, mohair rollers. Um, I like the four, as I say, we, it's my personal choice. We like a four inch roller. I like to be able to concentrate on the bit on painting. You tend to, for me, you tend to move very quickly. You're spreading a lot of paint about with big rollers. I just, it's just personal preference. Use what you feel most comfortable with. Um, a little tip we can give you, apart from the rollers, obviously you're gonna be using roller trays. Um, and when you see us paint, um, you don't see us paint, paint out of tins. Um, when we get onto undercoats, glosses and so on, um, we'll either be using roller trays or we'll decant paint. Try not to paint out of tins, anything you pick up on your brush, you'll be putting back in the tin every time you use your brush. Um, so decant where possible. To save on um, having to continuously wash out trays, and especially as you get later in the job, you're using lots of different colours, um, you can buy these little insert trays, works a treat. You can even take them out, um, if you want to swap to another colour, pop another tray in and carry on. Um, very useful, but the tray acts as a paint kettle, it's what we, we're decanting into if you like. So again, we're not contaminating, cross-contaminating tins with paint. Um, brushes, we do use brushes, you, <laughs> we'll, you'll see that as, you, as we progress. Um, but at this stage, as I said, we don't need to be worrying too much about the finish. Um, you can rub down between coats, you can flatten off, you can get um, a smooth finish every time you coat. But there's no point um, until you get to the end of your undercoating stage because you're just removing product. What our idea is, we're building product. There's four coats of primer, we're gonna add three coats of undercoat, we're gonna build this pro this, these products up so we've got a decent thickness, then we'll machine it back just removing that surface layer for a flat finish. Then we can get a gloss on and it, hopefully it'll look good. The only times at this stage that we're using brushes, um, and we do use them, is purely um, areas where it's not gonna be possible to get a machine in easily. Um, and by that, I mean anywhere around doors, um, anywhere areas around hatches, where you think, that's gonna be awkward to get a machine in there, I'm not gonna be able to smooth that down. So at this stage, we're actually just rollering on and laying off, which you'll have seen um, me doing one of my earlier videos. So that just makes life a little easier. A very useful bit of kit um, to store your brushes is the old trade mags. These are just basically a box um, with a, the little fume boxes, basically. You can store your brushes in here. They'll stay wet between applications. You just take your brush out and use it. Excellent little bit of kit, um, and again, it's just those little things, you don't have to constantly wash brushes out, and if you are hiring um, a poly tunnel or hiring a building and working there yourselves, um, where are you going to store your brushes? I've walked in poly tunnels, people have got all their kit laying on the floor. Well, that's just asking to get dust and debris and things kicked over, so something like this, stores your brushes, don't get any bits and pieces, no dust on them and you know they're going to be good every time you use them. You see us wearing gloves a lot. They're just ordinary disposable weight latex gloves. Every time you put your hand, um, and especially when you're painting roofs, it's, it's a good idea. If you're putting your hands on the roof as you're painting, 
um, you're leaving moisture behind from the surface of your hand and every time you move down you're leaving little handprints which you're painting over. Um, you could be sealing in moisture, you could be leaving areas um, that are just not being painted as, as they should be. So wear gloves, it keeps your hands clean but it also stops that transfer of greases, contaminants and moisture and primer is particularly um, liable to, to absorb moisture. Now we're in, <coughs> I can assure you, a warm workshop. We're always in t-shirts in here. Never drops below 16 degrees. So the surface temperature of steel, which incidentally is actually monitored daily, we take uh, steel temperatures and air temperatures and dew points and so on. Not something that necessarily you're gonna worry about, but if you are in a polytunnel, you're working outside, um, this steel can get quite cold overnight. As I said in here, it doesn't because it's, it's 24 hour heating, but it's not going to be the same for you. If you're in a polytunnel, you come in the next day, this steel's cold, a bit of a damp atmosphere, just like breathing on a mirror. Um, and as you're concentrating on your boat, you're getting close to it, you may be painting, your moist, the moisture from your breath is condensating on the surface of the boat while you're painting. So it's not only your hands, but your breath. I don't suspect you're going to be able to hold your breath for the length of the boat. That might be asking a little too much. But if you pop a dust mask on, so as you just paint, it's nothing to do with fumes, pop a dust mask on, that's just going to catch the moisture from your breath, stops it going onto the steel, um, and you've got no worries about literally painting on top of water as you're breathing on cold steel. So a few little tips. We'll try and chuck them in as we go along. Um, during the course of the clips, so that by the time you've watched more, hopefully um, we'll have got you out or got you out of a few fixes at least as far as um, contaminating the surface. Now, this boat has had its four primers, so this is a stage we're moving on now to think about undercoats. The system we use, um, the undercoat can be applied straight to the primer. Now that's a huge bonus because it means when we've got rubbed down. So that side of the job is, is, is sorted out quite neatly. Again, these big large areas, we're just going to roll them straight on, get a decent finish. Um, as I said, we're going to rub them down later. The handrails will actually keep a brush with us while we're going. And as we're painting the tops of the handrails, we'll just lay it off with a brush. Just leaving ourselves a smooth finish. Because when we go along here with the sander at a later date, you don't want to be trying to sand small narrow areas like that because you'll just cut through the paint so quickly that you'll end up with bare bits um, and, a, and not too good a finish. These can be done by hand, but we've left them nice and smooth. So by leaving them smooth, leaving us the minimum amount of rubbing down. So I machine the large areas, rub down the small by hand. We're not worried, or I'm not worried, um, about what colour the side of this boat's going to be or where the panels are going to be. I don't um, undercoat in different colours. I undercoat basically in one colour for, for almost all our work. Um, but we apply three top coats. So those top coats will more than cover the undercoat um, and leave us with a, a nice blemish-free finish. The roof, um, we use roof and deck paint. The product we use doesn't need to go onto an undercoat. So today, we'll actually be putting on the first of its three top coats. Um, as I said, no undercoat required. We will, however, rub this down. Because we're now looking for, if you like, a finished surface, this four coats of primer, we're gonna go over this by hand, just nibbing off any bits that may have uh, dropped from the ceiling, just so we've got a nice smooth finish but we're just going to key it over very lightly. Just a bit of 320 grade, we're just breaking up the surface, just sufficient for this roof um, and deck paint to adhere to that. Now this particular boat's going to have two colours, it's going to have a light grey at the front of the boat and a more traditional oxide looking back, uh, back cabin area, so the roof there is going to be oxide. And we're going to look later on, you'll see some coach lines going in, as to where that's actually going to be a break on the roof. Now, moving down the boat, there are certain areas um, where we've been laying off. The gunnels we lay off, again, um, 
we're going to use a roof and deck paint on the gunnels. The tops of the gunnels we don't worry about laying off, the sides we do, because the sides are going to be viewed um, as the boat passes and we want to make sure that looks nice. The tops of the gunnels we don't worry about. That's going to have a sanded finish, um, so it's, it, we require, if you like, a texture there. So the fact that it's got a bit of stipple from a, a roller will be invisible by the time we've um, sanded the surface. And that's another little process we'll show you later. So looking down the boat, um, it's got hatches. Those hatches, um, it's probably not particularly visible on, on, the, uh, on the clip, but they have all been done by hand. Again, this is this idea. We don't want to be trying to machine round um, hinges, all the little edges and things. So if we do it all by hand, we can apply the undercoats and then that just makes life just nice and easy for us. It's a light rub down when the undercoating's finished and we've got a really good surface there, nice flat surface to apply the glosses to. It's just a time-saving um, means of doing it, but in a, in a sensible way that will uh, make the life easy for us. Okay, so if we just go to the very back of the boat, just briefly to have a quick look. Um, once we've rubbed the roof down completely, <coughs> We're actually going to divide the roof, so we're going to tape across the centre of the roof um, so that we can get these two colours on today. So by the time you see um, the next clip, we should have a boat that's starting to, start to look something like with some various colours and, and different products in different areas. And when you can see those, we'll actually come back to you, show you what we've done in a little bit more detail, and we can take it on to the next stage.